Today I'm on the subject of demons are full of fear. So stay tuned for the teaching. I'm on the subject of the fact that demons, you know what? They're fearful beings. You know, you should, as a Christian, you should not be afraid of the devil. You shouldn't be afraid of the demonicrim. Unfortunately, there's Christians that just put Satan at a place of prominence that he has no right to be. Only Jesus should be at a place of prominence within our heart. There shouldn't be any fear of the demonicrim at all. In fact, what I'm going to bring out today is the fact, of course, that demons, they're actually fearful creatures. They're not some big bag bully bear, so to speak, with all this kind of power. I tell you, there's nothing greater than Jesus. Jesus defeated them at the cross, and they're afraid. They know their time is short, and they know that hell was made for them, and they know they've got no future. They know they're going to suffer in, for eternity for the evil that they are and the bad that comes out of them towards God's creation and towards God. I tell you, God is just, God is good, God is love, but the devil's bad. It's just really simple. It's not complicated. And as believers in the body of Christ, as Christians, we shouldn't fear the devil we shouldn't be afraid of the demonic realm. We should have no respect for them. We shouldn't put them at a place of prominence. In fact, I'll just give you the example there is in Scripture. In, in Matthew chapter 8, starting verse 28, we find as Jesus, when he had come to the other side of here, it says to the country, the Gensini sings, there met him two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, so that no one could pass that way. Verse 29 says this, and suddenly... They cried out saying, what have we to do with you, Jesus? You son of God, have you come here to torment us before our time or before the time? Now, verse 30 says this, now a good way off from them, there was a herd of swine feeding. So the demons begging him, in other words, begging Jesus, saying, if you cast us out, permit us to go into the herd of the swine. Look, Look at the fear that is coming out of them. Even before I get any further here in the scriptures, look at the fear. The first thing they did as soon as they saw Jesus, they didn't challenge him to a fight. They didn't get tough they, with their words. Look, Jesus showed up. And automatically within their hearts, there was defeat. They didn't even try to, uh, to lie, to deceive, to try to trick him. They know they couldn't. They knew the person of who they were dealing with. And, and the very thing that came out of them from the very beginning was that fear. They're afraid. Have you come to torment us before the time? In other words, they know they're going to be tormented for eternity. Hell was made for them because they're evil. God is good, and there's such evil inside of them that they're responsible. The devil is responsible for every bit of bad on this planet, every war, every person has died, every sickness, every disease, every evil thing. If it hadn't been for Satan, there never would have been the bad that have experienced throughout the generations because God created the Garden of Eden, put man in the garden, and it was good and gave man everything. Man had no needs. Man was completely well taken care of to the point that man had relationship with God. Man had everything going for him until the liar and the deceiver came. But the thing is this, though, though there are Christians that are afraid and shouldn't be. You need to see what's coming out of their heart because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Listen how they're talking. If you come to torment us, they're afraid. They're afraid of Jesus. And then they begged him. We're talking about a begging. Let us go into the swine, you know. And Jesus said, go. Listen to who was in control. I mean, if you understand 
your authority in Christ, then you will relate differently. Ephesians 4.25 says, nor give place to the devil. In the context I've given place here, we're talking about making room. I'm telling you, as believers, within your hearts, you shouldn't give place to the devil. You shouldn't put him in a place of prominence. You shouldn't have respect for any spirit whatsoever ever and put them in a place of promise with fear, that expectation of bad, because good belongs to you through Jesus Christ. You got the authority that's been given to you in Christ. And when you speak, it's the same as Jesus because it's delegated authority. See, Ephesians 4.27 says it this way, leave no such room or foothold for the devil. Give no opportunity to him at all. In other words, don't even go there. I encourage you as believers in the body of Christ to establish your uh, your understanding to the point of who you are in Christ to the point that you understand your authority in Christ. When it comes to demonic crime, boy, there's many examples of old I'm thinking about. Many different people I've heard of the story of different men of God in throughout history. One where um, even Satan himself manifested himself to him in the middle of the night where he woke up. He just looked at him and said, oh, it's just you. Roll over and went back to sleep. I'm going to tell you, that is a believer in the body of Christ that understands who he is in Christ, understands what Jesus accomplished at the cross, and Satan has been defeated completely. 